This morning's message, Paying Forward, brings to a conclusion the month of looking at our membership vows that we took when we joined the United, Me- well, the United Methodist for many of us, now the Methodist Church for us as we go forward. If you're not familiar with the term Paying Forward, it's relatively new, I guess 10 years thereabouts. And it means that when you receive a blessing, instead of thanking the person who gave it to you, you go and bless somebody else. You, you pay it forward. Of course, all Christians, we are recipients of that favor that we don't deserve, grace, the forgiveness, and our salvation. So it's almost automatic that we should pay it forward, that we wouldn't just receive that and, and it not and not respond in some positive way. As I thought about this message, I thought, I don't think I really have to do much in terms of arm twisting to convince you that we should all be doing good and doing good in our community and, of course, in this local church. I think about, you know, so it is, one again, a sermon for perhaps those who need it the least. And yet, as I thought, well, then why say it? Why bring it? I think it's perhaps that phrase that we heard in Hebrews 6, and it's, it's not that I'm saying that you're lazy or that I'm lazy, but let's face it, sometimes we just justify inaction by saying, I'm tired. And I think we are tired, right? A lot. Some of you should should do less so that you can do what you do better. So maybe that's how you're going to pay it forward. It does happen, especially. I've got to see if Karen Goggins comes today if she's not supporting her kids' athletic activities somewhere. But she's a classic case. I mean, you know, Karen. She can't say no to anybody. That's why we all ask her to do something else. She's really tired all the time. But for the rest of us, we too take on a lot. But from God's perspective, he's saying, but how about for me? I have tried to eliminate from my vocabulary the phrase, I didn't have the time. Truth is, I always seem to find time for things I like to do. Even when it doesn't appear I have time to go check my hog traps, I check my hog traps. And there's other things like that. We all have the time. But do we make it a priority? So this message, if nothing else, as we think about how to pay God forward, this great salvation, this great favor that we have received from the Lord, How do we make that time? How do we prioritize it? It is interesting that in Isaiah, as God is speaking to the church through Isaiah, he says, spend yourself for the hungry. And that's where we need to look and say, is the service that we're doing, is it really for the hungry? And and again, It might be people who actually do not have enough to eat. It may be as we have such a neat vocabulary in our politically correct age, the food insecure. (laughs) Glenda laughs. That's a sermon in itself in the bachelor house. It may be that we actually have to get out and get down to the food bank and serve. But there's a lot of other hungry people in the times in which we live. One of the ones that makes itself present in our life so often is how many children in general, and and by children, you know, you're always a child, right? Until you go into the gray, if your parents are alive, you're a child. We're finding that out now. Our, Our parents, even though they're losing their minds, we're still their children. (laughs) I'm sorry, someone laughed back there. (laughs) But you're still a child. It is amazing to me how many people 
how many men carry the father wound, and then where it really strikes is how many young women carry the father wound and just need the affirmation of their father. I would say a father, but after 25 years in ministry, I've learned that the pastor cannot be their father, and many times there is no other substitute. And yet we do have to, where we can, men in the church, in a safe way, in a chaste way, that's the hunger that we, the role we have to step into. There are many hungry people in the age in which we live, and the church is called to serve them. And it is better to serve these hungry, you know, as the Lord says, if you, hung, if you spend yourself to serve the hungry, if you satisfy the needs of the oppressed, that then it's, I thought so appropriate, you will shine in the dark. I like that image because we live in some pretty dark times. And to think if we will serve the hungry, look and see where in Uvalde are there needs that where people just hunger, where sure they may have a stocked refrigerator, but they're hungry. And yeah, I'll just leave it at that. There's plenty of hungry folks and that's who we're called to serve. And that's who we should reprioritize our schedule for. Because if we do that, then it will shine in the darkness and light up Uvalde, light up Texas, light up the world. Imagine if the church caught that vision. I'll just close with one other thing. There's so much in this scripture. I could, I could go on and on. And some of you say, and you do. But uh, <laughs> it's interesting to me, and this, is, this was the challenge to me to say, you know, in agriculture, if you have a field that gets the same amount of irrigation and one field produces the crop that it's supposed to, God actually looks at that and says, may a blessing happen over there. And then the same field that produces weeds and thistles is under judgment. Of course, we're supposed to take that analogy, and those of us who've been richly blessed, we better be blessing people because that's, that's the crop that God wants. That's why the blessings were sent to us in the first place. And if we're not serving in that capacity, then we're just like that field that just uses up the nutrients, uses up and produces weeds, produces nothing useful for the kingdom. And says, God says to that one, burn it, burn it. That's what the Holy Ghost is speaking to in Hebrews 6, to say, don't be lazy. You've got all this stuff. You've got all this blessing. You've got all this time. Make time to serve God and to pay it forward. Let us pray. Mighty God, we are richly blessed. We do have so much. But Lord, if our hands should be about different work, if our feet should take us to different places, if there are different people that we are not serving yet, show us and let us repent and be about that work. We ask this, Lord, in your mighty name. Amen.